Hi. Uh, today's episode, a uh, little bit self-indulgent, I'm afraid. Um, I'm just going to take a trip down memory lane and just talk about all of the different um, publications my artwork has appeared in. And do it in chronological order. Now, this is twofold. One, because I like talking about myself, clearly. And two, because a few people have asked me, where have my where has my artwork appeared? Um, you know, who I who am I? And what have I been up to? And so the, first off, this was in probably nineteen ninety nine. Uh, I did a, a small press comic book called The Ministry. This is a small press. Uh, I think I met some people uh, at a comic convention. And ended up doing this. This is a twenty page story that I did. Well, I drew. Someone else wrote all about monsters and demons and. Looking back, the uh, the figure work a little bit stiff. Might have uh, I'm probably aware of that because you know, I do stuff in silhouette an awful lot, which is a good way to hide drawing errors. But um, I, I really like some of the um, some of the scene set setting and some of the, uh, the establishing shots I've drawn. They're still quite nice. Uh, Square Bunny, it, Square Eyed Bunny Productions, Pulp Kitchen. These guys are still going. I see them at the um, Comic conventions, but they've they've gone in a different direction to me. They do sort of you've gone for the comedy route now. But I uh, had a st wrote this story and published and drew it uh, about a, a dancer going to dance school. But, um, took a lot of reference work. Having I had to, it was dreadful. I had to go to a dance school and watch these girls dance around in theatres. It was tough, but got to do what you got to do. Um, then I. Sent some work into previews because they used to have a uh, an, an, a fan art page, and rather than uh, sending a picture of a famous comic book character, I sent in some of the artwork uh, from the Square Eyed Bunny Productions, and they did a nice little blurb about me, which is very generous of them to get my name out. And that was in that was way back in two thousand. Um, this is a bit of a career low point for me. I did this comic book called Oh Sh Oh Shit. I was just one of the contributors. And uh, it was uh, sort of a bit of a tongue-in-cheek uh, story. And they, they've messed around with my artwork, which I'm not happy. And they've all stretched it and cropped it and cut the, chopped it up. Not too impressed with that. This was my, my first comic book cover. And it, unintentionally, this picture here, it's quite a nice striking image, wasn't actually intended for... Uh, the front cover. This is Fusion One by Engine Comic Books. I think these guys are still going as well. Um, that picture is actually a, just a tiny little panel from uh, from the story that I drew. Once again, sort of very dark figures. Um, clearly, they had either they had pr uh, problems reproducing my artwork or. Uh, or I messed up with the drawing somewhere. But yeah, that was quite a nice one, I enjoyed that. And then this was a quite a poignant moment. I met the people called uh, Mongoose Publishing and I did a whole host of work for this. I didn't do the front cover, or you can't even see it because it's so shiny. But uh, a lot of the internals, pictures like that. Um, th these were role play games. Back when role play games were in books instead of on computers, so this was in the early 2000s. That artwork's all mine. I worked prolifically for them. So that was the Slayer's Guide to Hobgoblins. Then we had the Slayer's Guide to Knolls, Slayer's Guide to Troglodytes, Slayer's Guide to something I can't even pronounce. None of this artwork uh, on the front cover is mine, I must stress. Slayer's Guide to Orcs, Slayer's Guide to Dragons, Slayer's Guide to Medusas. Interesting, that, that artwork was by a friend of mine called Anthony Dilly, and the statue at the, at the Behind the Medusa there, I posed for that. I'm not quite that muscular, all statuesque, but I'll, that painting was based on a pose I did. Slayer's Guide to Centaurs, Slayer's Guide to Bugbears, Slayer's Guide to Amazons, lots of scantily clad beautiful women. Slayer's Guide to Crusades of Valor. Oh, sorry, a big one. Traveller's Tales to Crusades of Valor. Encyclopedia Arcane Necromancy. Demonology the Dark Road. Encyclopedia Arcane Illusionism, Ships of the Elves, Ships of the Goblinoids, Seas of Blood. Oh, and I think I did a... No, okay, it's not this book. 
I thought I did a nice painting in the back. Oh, all these um, layouts of ships, they're all my artwork. And uh, lots of the internals there. Ships of War. We then went on to uh, the Quintessential Fighter, this uh, Quintessential series. And um, I did lots of pictures of armor and swords and stuff. Quintessential Samurai, the Quintessential Rogue, the Quintessential Dwarf, the Quintessential Psychic Warrior, the Quintessential Druid. Moving around, ah! Now this artwork on the covers is mine. So we did these uh, power class uh, series of nobles. It's one of my paintings. Hedge Wizards, once again, my artwork. Exorcists. I don't know if he looks like an exorcist now. I might have changed my opinion, but there you go. Uh, Gladiators. I really enjoyed painting that picture. I used a lot of fair reference and had to do a little bit of a historic research and then twist it to make it fantastical. Uh, Cabalists. And I, I think that picture I've taken and manipulated from uh, Conan the Barbarian when Arnold Schwarzenegger dressed up as a priest. Uh, explorers, and you see there's a, oh, she's got twin mini cat uh, mini crossbows, you can see there's a, a Tomb Raider uh, influence there. Uh, pirates, this was before uh, Johnny Depp did his um, Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Assassins, looking at a nice sexy assassin there. Artificers, Artificers, is that right? Yeah. The Fool, a nice jester there. Alchemists. And Knights, beautiful. And then once again, back to other people's artwork, we're just doing internals. Slayer's Guide to the Undead. The Gladiator, once again, oh, this is a topic I quite enjoyed. Um, oh, a nice establishing shot there of a, a tavern. And there's, there's a good eye there. Ultimate Feats, the Ultimate Equipment Guide, Fancy Cities of Scrag, um, High Throne, cool. Oh, and then um, Mongoose Publishing sort of went and took a different route and started doing uh, books that are a little bit tongue in cheek. So, uh, Slayer's Guide to Rules Lawyers, Slayer's Guide to Female Games, and uh, in this one, I actually managed to sneak in a little self-portrait there, being a bit cheeky. Ah, oh, and this is uh, my front cover here. Uh, they're into macho women with guns. And I believe this is a full colour book and all this artwork is mine from cover to cover, which is always nice to be able to say. And it will Quite like that. Amassment of weapons, yeah, that's all mine. Judge Dread role playing a big high point for me. You know, a bit of a, I use this as a bit of a stepping stone. So a uh, front cover's not mine, I'm just saying. Um, but I drew. Not be able to find them now. I drew lots of stuff for that. That was good. I did a whole series of mega cities. One most wanted. Brit sit. Uh, Mega City One Target, uh, Full Eagle Day. Oh, that was about um, recruits uh, becoming judges. Uh, Russian Roulette and Sleeping Kitten. None of the front cover work is my own. So okay, and then I started working for a company called Thunderhead Games, um, and they had created this vast city. Once again, this is a role play game that you play with dice and tables sitting around. Uh, so I drew lots of uh, scenery for this massive city they'd imagined. That was quite quite nice. Is there a bit of a change attack for me? I um, worked for a bowling company, producing Christmas cards and calendars. And, uh, we did key rings and mugs and all sorts of things. Oh, and then here's this is the Damned Knight. So this was done oh, in the, 
about sort of 2003. This is all my artwork and my story. A nice dark gothic comic book that I did. Um, still yet to actually get a, a form formally published. Unfortunately, the uh, the publisher who I've got to deal with, it all fell through, and it's, it never happened. But I still like looking at that. Um, back uh, back to some of the fanzines that I've worked on in more more recent time. So between here and here, there's a about an eight or nine year gap where I, I took a break from artwork and I uh, did other things for a while. So I started working with a, a fanzine called Zarjaz, which basically is a 2000 AD fanzine. So using it as a stepping stone to get the attention of um, 2000 Rebellion for 2000 AD. And that's um, someone else right, but once again, quite dark figures there. Did another one. Oh, I worked for Massacre for Boys. And this was an interesting one. I rather than that's not my work on the cover, I must add. But rather than doing all the artwork, I was someone else's colorist, and um, that's a first for me. I've never done coloring on other people's artwork, but it's quite muted, as you can see. But it was meant to be a dark story. Yeah, looks okay. I think it's interesting looking at your colors on someone else's artwork. It adds a different perspective to it. And then this is another stepping stone. It's from the same people as Zarjan's Future Quake. And um, I sort of, I used this one to the best of my abilities. There was, I, I picked a character and used a lot of reference of Donald Trump on this guy. And, uh, and various other celebrities and politicians and stuff. And, um, but I really used this as a, a way to showcase my talents for drawing people to get in with um, what was at that time called, or well, I thought it was called, uh, Blue Water, who do uh, like celebrity biography comic books. And I showed them what I could do with Donald Trump, and they they off offered me this. Uh, and I've, it's my most recent one, I'm most proud of. Um, there I am. And this is all mine. The pencils, the inks, the colours. All mine on the story about an undecided voter who's uh, listening to what's going on in America, listening to what Donald Trump has to say. And it's a very clever, clever story. That's my most recent one. And um, hopefully this is gonna be the first of many uh, with what's now called Storm Entertainment or Tidal Wave is that something else called. They keep changing their name for some reason, but they're really good guys and I'm really enjoying working for them. And I hope this has been enlightening, entertaining and it's inspired you to go out and draw comics. Thanks a lot guys.